Hi again. This program is going to take a look at the atomic radius and some of the factors that affect the size of the atom. First off, we need to understand the electrostatic forces that are present in the atom. Electrostatics, you might recall, is the attraction between opposite charges. First off, as the number of protons increases, that would increase the pull on the valence electrons. For instance, if I have one proton and one electron, we could say there's one unit of force. If I double the number of protons, I double that pull or double that attraction. But one of the things we know is as atoms get bigger, not only do we have more protons present in the nucleus, we also have more electrons. And this causes a complication to the problem because there simply isn't the force of attraction that's present with that electron. The inner level or lower level electrons will actually push out against that electron, repelling it. As a result, chemists tend to measure what's called the effective nuclear charge, which takes into consideration both the number of protons that are in the nucleus, as well as the number of inner level electrons that are repelling. Let's take a look at how this is calculated. If we consider for a minute the element lithium, it has one valence electron that I've identified here in blue, and two inner level electrons. To calculate the effective nuclear charge, I take a look at the number of protons in lithium, which are three, and I'm going to subtract the number of those inner level electrons. That leaves me then with an effective nuclear charge of plus one. Let's take a look at the element sodium and its configuration. Again, I'll identify the one valence electron that it has, and that then leaves it with 10 inner level electrons. Sodium possesses 11 protons, take away those 10 electrons. It also has a positive one effective nuclear charge. Fluorine has the following configuration. Again, I'll identify its valence electrons. Those would be located at the second energy level. So it's both the two and the five, seven valence electrons. That leaves two inner level electrons. So fluorine's effective nuclear charge, being that it has nine protons, take away the two inner level electrons, means its effective nuclear charge is about plus seven. Another factor that affects the force of attraction is distance. Again, if we start with one unit of force on our electron, if I move that electron further away, then that will then result in a reduction in the attractive force. Let's take a look at these now and how they come to play in the atomic radius. So here's a graph of some of the elements in the periodic table, a 3D graph. And the column on the left, I've identified group number one members, lithium, sodium, and potassium. Here in this table, I've placed their electron configurations. Their valence electrons are all S1, and all the other electrons are inner level electrons. And from that, I've been able to deduce their effective nuclear charge. All three elements in this particular group have a plus one effective nuclear charge, but they do differ in the number of occupied energy levels they have, which I could get from the period in the periodic table. An increasing number of energy levels results in a greater distance and a weakening of the force of attraction between the nucleus and the valence electrons. This results then in larger atoms. Now we'll move across the periodic table from lithium over to neon. We can see here that our atoms get smaller. Again, we'll take a look at their electron configurations and deduce their effective nuclear charge. We can see that the number of valence electrons is increasing as we move down through their configurations, but the number of inner level electrons always remains the same. Their number of protons is also increasing. As a result, their effective nuclear charge grows as you go from left to right across the periodic table. They also all have the same number of occupied energy levels. So as a result, my atoms get smaller because distance really isn't an effect. The distance is remaining essentially constant because my occupied energy levels are remaining constant. But what is increasing is the effective nuclear charge, which pulls harder on the electrons in the valence shell, bringing them in closer. So I hope you found that useful. We'll keep coming back to these trends in subsequent programs, as well as these forces that are at play. Remember, comments are always welcome.